another movie review. And again, it's from the year 1961. I was in fact seven years old at the time and uh, don't really recall uh, too much of the movies that were on the box, courtesy of my father's interest. However, Guns of Navarone is what we're going to look at, released in 61, directed by J. Lee Thompson and the screenplay by Carl Foreman. It's based on a book, The Guns of Navarone, by Alistair MacLean and produced by Carl Foreman. Uh, the cast, and it's a pretty impressive one, uh, ensemble. Gregory Preck is Captain Keith Mallory. David Niven plays uh, Corporal John Anthony Miller. Anthony Quinn is Colonel Andrea Stavros. Stanley Baker is uh, Chief Petty Officer Butcher Brown. Anthony Quayle is Major Roy Franklin. James Darren, remember him from TV? Aspirus and Papadimus. Irene Papas is Maria Papadimus. Gia Scale as Anna. And then we get some narration from James Robertson Justice as uh, Jensen. Richard Harris is squadron leader of Barnsby. And then there's another uh, a, a collection of supporting actors. And there will be a slide so you can peruse at your ledger. So I've actually uh, read um, this book by Alistair MacLean. But I have to uh, point out that I didn't recall it a great deal when I watched this movie about a year ago. But here's go. Anyway, very good cinematography from Oswald Norris. And the music's pretty impressive by Dimitri Timkin. Very well received uh, movie and nominated for Best Picture. And Bill Warrington won the Oscar for Special Effects. The novel describes uh, activities uh, in World War II and specifically the Greek island of Navarone. However, in uh, reality, Navarone didn't, didn't exist, but it was created in Alison McLean's mind, and the plot, although pic purely fictional, however, the sto story that did take place uh, has certain elements of truth. Uh, it was called the uh, Dodicanes uh, Campaign, uh, by the Allies to capture the in Italian-held Greek islands in the Aegean Sea in 1943. And the story is based on the Battle of Laros and La Rosa's islands. The island was, uh, Rhodes was the location where, uh, for the film, uh, but the La Rosa islands, islands <coughs> was the location for this very large, in fact, the largest naval artillery gun used in World War II, built by the Italians and then subsequently used by the Germans. As I said, the film location was Rhodes. Uh, so that's the backdrop to this story. Naval carts were all part of a team that had been put together by a senior naval commander in the British Royal Navy. And the task was to disable these guns that were in an almost impregnable position and they were pointed in the direction where a large contingent of English soldiers, about 2,000 in all, were trying to evacuate from Karios. Now, if the guns weren't disabled, these soldiers would certainly have been slaughtered by the enemy. So Peck is put in charge of this group to try and carry out this impossible task of scaling a huge rock to gain access to the island and then penetrate the fortress and destroy the gun. A pretty formidable uh, cast and a pretty formidable task. They're all experts in their own right. Uh, Peck is the, a mountaineer who's going to have to climb this rock face uh, first. It's a standard World War II action flick, but there's a lot of action in it. And Mallory speaks German, and we witness some incredible footage, particularly of the sea as they try to land near the island. There's a huge storm in progress. Very realistic special effects. And then there's the assault on the piece of rock, which is also formidable. Typical Hollywood excitement and tension uh, in attempts to infiltrate the German resistance by any method. Mixing with the local Greeks is also seen in some detail. Uh, this to elude capture by the patrolling uh, German uh, uh, army in the town. Uh, there's unfortunately, but typically in this type of music, mu uh, movie, a traitor who tries to inform uh, to the on the Germans. 
inform the details of the uh, pr project to the Germans. There's also a fair degree of hostility amidst the group. Mallory's not particularly liked by Miller and Stavros. And Stavros and Mallory have some unfinished business that had been delayed until the end of the war. Stavros blames Mallory for the death of his family in an operation that went sadly wrong. And he's wanting revenge. Quinn is absolutely fantastic in this movie. Mind you, I think he is in all of his stuff. He's got that sort of glint in his eye, which is ferocious. He's also got that womanising look about him. A lot of guile. He's smart and the character he portrays is heroic. Peck, on the other hand, is very predictable. Follows the book. His ability to lead is tested throughout the film by the others. He maintains discipline, but at the same time allowing them to be themselves, so to speak. And it brings out their qualities. Baker is an interesting character. Brown, who seems to have lost his nerve. Too much killing. He can't wait for the war to end. And another project like this is all too much for him. Niven, who's the explosive expert, expert, is very deliberate and very creative in this movie. The movie is quite typical, really, of movies in the 50s and early 60s, depicting World War II. The Allies are the heroes and the Germans are those nasty people. The ending is completely predictable and very Hollywood-like, but I did like the quality of the acting. The characters all have a real flavour. And that's one of the appealing aspects to this uh, movie. Some of the scenes, though, were pretty tough to watch, particularly when they find out about the traitor, a young woman who's apparently uh, dumb. Her name's Anna. But given the choice of either bringing her along or leaving her for the Germans or killing her, the group consensus is she's got to be killed. Although there, with regard to who should take responsibility to pull the trigger. There's an intense scene after the woman has been murdered. We capture the room with the corpse on the floor and the two protagonists leave the room. And there's a shot of the room with complete, a complete wall obliterated by a bombshell. It really did capture the whole essence of what war can be like. Good performances all round. A very enjoyable film. Whether it uh, will stay with you for very long, I doubt it. But that's my review of The Guns of Navarone.